Hey everyone, this is Ross, and in today's video, I want to talk about peaches and I want to talk about blueberries. What you're looking at right now is my peach trees. I have actually a number of them in the ground, but these two are the oldest and they are spied against the fence. The reason I want to talk about both of these two fruits is that I think out of all the things so far this year, these are getting the highest fruit set. Um, they are also among some of the older plants or trees in the yard. The peaches here, this is now their fourth year in the ground. And you can see just how vigorous they are and the fruit set is actually insane. Um, I'm definitely going to have to come in here and thin out all these peaches very soon. We are also struggling though for the first time this year with peach leaf curl on this particular tree. Um, it was, I think it was just only a matter of time because it's so humid here in my climate that I'm amazed that these peaches haven't had any disease yet at all. So peach leaf curl is not really the biggest issue, but what I am gonna do is come in here very soon um, and spray the tree with kaolin clay, AKA surround. And that's gonna help protect these fruits from plum cacurlio and then also spray it with copper and the copper or sulfur, whichever product I decide to use, both organic is going to help with the peach leaf curl, that disease. Um, but the, the progress of these peaches over the years has been insane. The fruit set is just ginormous. Uh, I think last year we got somewhere around 100 peaches per tree is what I left on the trees. And this year, I'm expecting double that. So we could get probably about 200 peaches per tree. And that's only year four. These are on um, standard rootstock. You can see just how vigorous and how strong and how thick these trunks have become. I know peaches do fruit quite heavily at younger ages. So, um, you know, this is really a good idea. If you're looking for something that you want it to fruit early and you want it to fruit heavily, you don't want to wait forever for this stuff. I think peaches are a great example. Now the blueberries uh, have actually, we're going to show you them in just a second. They're on the other side of this fence and I want to show them to you, but it's a bit noisy on the other side of the fence because we're on a main street there. But I want to talk about them before I go show you them is that the peaches, or I'm sorry, the blueberries have been in the ground for, this is their third year now, so this is their third spring. Uh, we originally had them actually back over here, way on the other side of the yard in a raised bed. And we filled the entirety of the raised bed with peat moss, and peat moss is hydrophobic, but blueberries like growing in peat moss because it's acidic, and uh, blueberries need acidic soil somewhere below a five on the pH scale. So that's like a huge requirement with blueberries is to get that pH right. But they weren't really doing well in that raised bed. I didn't like how they were situated. I had to water them constantly. Blueberries do not like to dry out. If they dry out at all, they die. So um, it's really a big issue to kind of keep them in that raised bed because it is raised above the ground. I didn't have any irrigation hooked up there. They were younger plants. So I was growing actually quite a few of them in containers for a while as well, because we had at one point probably around 15 different varieties of blueberries. And these are the high bush varieties. We also had some other ones, but I was growing them in these 10 gallon grow bags here that you see. And they actually did pretty well. They got to a really nice size um, with drip irrigation. They were constantly staying wet. The pH was correct. Uh, everything was doing really well in these containers. I highly recommend growing them in containers. I know a lot of people do that in uh, 15 or 20 gallon size pots and they fruit really well for them. Probably around year three, which is where I'm at right now. Um, the way I did it though, um, going forward, because I didn't want to have to grow a lot of things in containers unless it was really worth the effort. You know, things like fig trees, things that are more tropical, things that wouldn't survive the ground here. You know, so uh, I decided let's move all the, the blueberries out of this raised bed. Whatever was survived, take out some that were in the containers, 
we'll get rid of some. I planted some at my cousin's house. Um, and we planted them basically over here on this side of the house. And we selected this area mainly because it's getting a good amount of sun. But also because uh, what we did here is we put down tons of peat moss on the ground. I got around uh, 10 or 15 bales of peat moss and just put it on the top of the soil here. What was here originally was a big shade tree, just like this one over here. And we cut that down uh, because it was kind of falling over and we couldn't really get into the ground. I couldn't dig through it. It was a real big effort. So what I said was, let's just put peat moss on the ground really high, plant these blueberries in here, and we can eventually uh, add lots of material like wood chips. You can see there's been tons of wood chips added to this bed over time that have also helped break in, uh, broke down. We added in our Mara de Bois strawberries, which you can see in here, which are actually flowering a pretty heavy, uh, heavy first crop, which is a bit unusual. We also put different flowering plants in here, ornamental type plants like this here, and we put in some lavender. We put in some persimmon, Asian persimmon that are not gonna get that big. Same thing with another persimmon back in here. We added in a nice little garden bed. This whole area I usually never show you guys. This is a nice little gooseberry that was quite young and is really starting to take off this year. Um, we even put in some shallots. We have the, the, the strawberries going crazy. That right there is a nice little honeyberry. And then this is actually a bush cherry that I've talked about in a previous episode of Fruit Talk. These things are doing really well. They grow really well. They put out lots of fruit. They're a bit more problem free. We actually have two bush cherries over there uh, underneath that shade tree, believe it or not. We've even got some asparagus over here in the corner. And then now onto the blueberries. And you can see that these blueberries really are not that old. Um, I'm not even sure if these guys are just as old as the ones in the bed. But every single one of these blueberry plants, all six of them, are loaded. I cannot believe it. Here's a really good example. This is, <laughs> this is what I'm looking at here. This is what I'm dealing with. That all these flower clusters, I mean, just this little thing right here is about seven or eight blueberries. Times that by, I mean, what's on this plant, I would imagine is probably maybe 50 of those clusters. I can't, I can't really count. It's really difficult. There's so many blueberries that I'm just astounded. I cannot freaking believe it. You can see it also over here on this particular plant. I mean, look at the productivity. It's incredible. And then one last one I want to show you guys. There we go. I mean, the productivity is all up and down the plants. I've seen honeybees, bumblebees coming in here and pollinating these guys. That's one big issue, definitely with the blueberries, that a lot of blueberry orchards, they, uh, they bring in lots of bees. And I've certainly been seeing the bees, so that's a good sign. We should have a lot of fruit set, and I won't have to come in there and manually pollinate all this stuff, but that's incredible. I have to say is that I've really just been surprised and overwhelmed by the productivity of my peaches, the blueberries here in the Philadelphia area, zone seven. I don't even have to water those, those blueberries, by the way, that I was showing you guys. The varieties that I have are all Northern high bush varieties. We've got things like Duke and Chandler and Jersey. Those are the really the big standards here in this climate in this part of the country. I know Jersey has crazy amounts of blueberry growers. You could just drive all throughout Jersey and find tons of blueberry farms. They really love to grow actually in sandier soils, which are usually lower on the pH scale. So I don't have that here, believe it or not. I only have about a neutral pH. We're growing in exclusively clay. So what I was able to do was introduce that low pH soil in the form of the peat moss get them to grow in that and then eventually they went down their roots went down into the native clay which is highly nutritious you know we also added in all kinds of wood chips on the top I mean layers of wood chips at least probably over the years in total maybe a whole foot of wood chips that is eventually broken down so 
all that stuff is just making these plants real easy to grow very productive we've got them in a good amount of light at least uh, at least seven hours of light um, and they're just gonna do really well so uh, in terms of protecting them from the birds because I know some of you guys are gonna ask me about both of these things is that the peaches here we're gonna have to bag them individually I can't put a net over this um, the birds will go after my peaches they have last year they went a little nuts actually they're called cat birds and these birds are insane they're they're ravenous man as soon as they figure out that your fruit exists in wherever it is it's over so no matter what it is a net a, a, an organza bag individually bagging them it just didn't work um, so what I'm gonna do this year is make sure I bag every single one of them make sure that the birds can't find them don't know that they're there and if they never know that they're there, the bags should work. The same thing with the blueberries is that you can very easily, because the blueberries are not the biggest plants just yet, you can just put a net over them. And the net works perfectly fine. The birds won't bother those, uh, but they will go crazy, it seems like, for the peaches. So certainly um, protect your fruit, guys. Make sure you're having some kind of system in place, because if these things, these pests, these critters, the birds, whatever it is, if they find out where it is, you're going to have an issue. All right. So that was this episode, this video here for you guys. This was Ross Ratty. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you want to see more videos on the peaches and the blueberries, we're going to show you that. Um, today, actually, I'm planting out a lot of the fig trees here in this, in this bed that we've created. Uh, we have a whole bunch of them now that have finally been adjusted to the sun. So if you are interested in buying some fig trees from me, we are going to be selling quite a bit of them very soon on FigBid. Probably by the time you guys are watching this, a lot of them have already been listed and some of them maybe have already been sold. So check out the description for that link to FigBid. That's where all of them are going to be sold. That's the store that I'm going to be using. Also, check us out on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. We have a whole bunch of different uh, type of content over there. Also on the blog, right? RossRaddy.Wixsite.com slash blog. Check us out there. You can subscribe to the blog and get notified when there's new blog posts. All right, guys. Take care, and we'll, uh, we'll catch you all soon.